All right, hey everybody, what's up? Um, so we're gonna talk about, so when I first signed up for this talk, I actually didn't sign up for a talk, I signed up for a workshop. Um, and then I had about three weeks to condense an eight hour workshop down to 25 minute talk. Um, so Cypress 10 was released two days ago and I'm pretty, pretty pumped about it actually. Um, there was supposed to be a video that went on that amped everybody up. View Mastery lovingly supported us in producing a video that talks about how component testing is going to, um, well, honestly, it's not really about component testing at all. It's about how the entire industry is shifting left from page-based development to, I guess I don't, I'm not even looking at my notes, um, from page-based development to component-driven development. And we've heard so many talks this week about that. We've heard histoire from, I can never pronounce Guillaume's tag, acrium. We've heard about histoire, we've heard about storybook. Everybody is thinking in components, right? Your designers are thinking in Figma. They give you design libraries. And then you compose together a nice, beautiful page. Um, and so when I started at Cyprus, I, uh, I'll introduce myself, I guess. Uh, my name is Jessica Sachs. I'm a staff engineer at Cyprus IO. Um, this is a picture of me when I was 16. Uh, I'm a high school dropout. And I was extremely lucky that I got a job doing uh, first manual QA and four weeks later automated QA because I asked, so what do you do when I give you the bugs? Like, what do you actually do with that information? And very quickly was introduced with, to a whiteboard with you know, two for loops and big O notation. So um, yeah, this, this photo came up on like my timeline and I was like very moved by it. Vintage, vintage tech always gets me. If, I don't know if anybody else here really enjoys that. Um, but I'm a contributor to View Test Utils and VTest. Um, I know a lot about testing. I think a lot about testing. I really don't like doing it. Um, I like building components. I like building component libraries, and I want it to be an accident, almost, that I end up testing, right? It's so easy once you have your component in your little sandbox or whatever uh, to just type dot click, right? Or dot type with a string. It's very, very easy. And that's what I was hoping to achieve with Cypress 10 and Cypress component testing. And I think, I think we fucking did it. Oh, I was supposed to not say. Uh... <laughs> I have a reputation for, uh, for cussing too much. If you've seen any interviews with me this week, it's, uh, they have to keep cutting and splicing them. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but recently, I guess, January 2022, if uh, anybody remembers uh, the Faker JS College JS debacle, um, I'm one of the eight maintainers now that maintains this. We had to rewrite it because it was not type safe. We had to do a bunch of stuff to it. Um, I'm one of the eight or so maintainers um, on that project now. Uh, very proud of that. I did most of the, the navigation around the open collective. So I've written very little code. Um, it was mostly all writing blog entries and stuff like that. Um, I am a Vue Mastery course instructor. I teach the testing track for Vue Mastery. There's two courses. Um, we might even get to pair program. I say pair, I mean mob program on some of it. Um, and I've been a front end developer, QA engineer, and engineering manager. I've worn a lot of hats, um, worn a lot of hats. And I am probably every persona that Cypress targets, all the way from engineering manager who cares about code coverage down to developer who just wants to build the freaking feature. I said frick. Um, build the freaking feature and just get it out, right? Um, and I'm also the QA engineer that doesn't know anything about JavaScript, right? I've been all of the user personas. So I have pretty decent product instinct. Um, and I was the product lead for Cypress 10, which you will see is completely overhauled from a UX perspective. Um, I'm very excited to show it to you. All right, so cool. So let's start with some baselines, right? Why do we test? So before we talk about what kinds of tests to write, who we're writing for, um, does your test have an audience? So there's some really interesting questions here. Um, why do we do it? So confidence, one. 
There, this is supposed to be a GIF, but I did a WebM and totally messed it up. But if anybody's, if anybody is a Rick and Morty fan, and you all better be, um, you know what this looks like. Cool. So we want confidence so that our bosses trust our work, so we don't get fired. That's like my selfish reason. Is like I don't want to get fired. Um, I also don't want my teammates to hate me when they run into my bugs. Uh, so that's that's kind of important to me. I want my teammates to trust my work. And finally, I want my users to trust my work. And that basically means I want my users to trust my product. Um, OK, cool. This is a Cypress talk, though. This is not a testing theory talk. This is about Cypress 10. This is about how to test view components. Um, and we had a big challenge when we introduced Cypress component testing, because it's like, well, Cypress is an end-to-end -end testing tool. What are you doing? And the answer is that end-to-end -end testing is the very, very hard part of testing in a browser. Uh, when, <laughs> when instead you decide to only test a tiny little Lego block, right, or a little component, um, everything becomes really easy. And all of the work that Cypress did to, I don't know, block on network requests, like if a component makes a network request, in a current stack, in a current testing stack, you might use something like Mock Service Worker and re-implement a lot of mock endpoints. Cypress already did that work. Um, and so when you install Cypress, you get a mock, a network level mocking library that can handle everything from GraphQL to REST, um, given the GraphQL API needs love. Um, we use it internally, so I know it needs love. Um, I suffer through it every day. Um, so what's the difference between the two testing types if we're reusing most of the same stuff. Um, and it's kind of all about compilation. And everybody's making the same decisions, which is kind of, it means that everybody's solving the same problem. Everybody's trying to move from this page-based workflow where you compile the entire app and stand it up and test it, all the way into this component-based workflow where you compile your code, right? You compile your code, your test code, your stories. Right? And technically, the technical difference between storybook, Cypress, component testing, and histoire is like very small. We all have the same architecture goals. Um, if you were here yesterday, you saw Guillaume's talk about Vite. Um, we support Vite. We're not Vite native. We support mm, eight different framework bundler configurations, right? So we have Create React app, we have Krako, we have Next, we have Nuxt. We have different versions of those. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. Vite is the easiest to support. I, I'm so happy at how well designed the Vite API is for other developers. It's lovely. Um, I did a spike in like pre 1.0 Vite for Cypress, and it took me two hours to build. It's great. Krako, on the other hand, like, I think, and also Next.js ended up breaking us and Jest in a minor version like two weeks ago, like a minor patch version. But Vite is lovely. And the architecture goals for Vite and Vtest and Histoire and Storybook is to reuse the same build configuration that you're always using, right, so that development looks like production. And that's a big theme that we're going to talk about, development looking like prod. Because you want to have confidence that the work you're doing, the code you're writing, whatever, when you hit go, assuming that the CI button is called go and you have continuous deployment, so when you hit go and it goes live, uh, that you don't have to do manual testing afterwards, at the end. You have, there's no surprises that your stuff is like really messed up. Um, so that's why dev and prod and test should be as close to humanly possible. Um, together as humanly possible. And compilation is a big, big piece of that. Um, I mean, I would say show of hands, but there's a lot, a lot of cases that are only caught in production, right? Especially when you're generating like, a, like an SSG site or an SSR site, and you deploy it, and you're like, oh, crap. It didn't work the same way in that context as when I was in dev mode. And that's the difference that you want to resolve. Cool. So we're all taking the same architecture approach. We all want fast HMR. We all want the same dev tools that we're used to in these little meta frameworks, in Histoire, in Storybook, in Cypress. Cool. 
So what's the difference? Do I have to choose one? What's the deal? Um, and you just heard on talk about vtest, and vtest is core supported by Vue, and you should absolutely use it. Just recently went through, recently, like three weeks ago, went through a transition from Meta to be community controlled, because Meta hadn't been committing to it for like, like five years. Like there was like one guy working on Jest for a very long time, and it, there was a, a lot of conflict with ES module support, and obviously, V is all about ES modules, so naturally vtest came along to solve that problem. Um, so my answer is that you need a node-based runner like vtest or jest, uh, and you need a browser-based runner. Cypress is a browser-based test runner. It means that the code that's compiled that you bundle is going to execute in you know, a browser context, not an emulated browser context, right? If you're using vtest, if you're using jest, there is an environment key somewhere in the config file, the respective config file that says happy DOM or JS DOM. And there are a lot of issues. For example, like the box model might not be implemented. Window location may have been implemented by now. But just abstractly, emulated DOM is always going to be behind user DOM, right? The way, the way it works is that the standards are implemented by the browsers first, and then the tools catch up. So testing in a browser is always going to give you the most realistic, trustworthy, trustworthy result. Cool. So I think you need both. Um, very nice. Let me pause. I talk quick. So the divide. The divide between testing tools that you might choose. Um, I would choose vtest or jest for any business logic. And I would choose Cypress for stuff that renders. And there is a comparison page inside of the vtest docs where they talk about all the different testing tools. And in the vtest docs, they say, if it renders, you should probably test it in a browser. Um, your mileage may vary. Everybody, you know, software is hard. Software is very difficult, um, and people make choices for reasons, with a capital R, reasons, and there's no shame in that. Sometimes you might want to trade the speed of vtest and your component testing for the production-like safety you get when using a tool like Cypress. Um, let's say, did I already say that? I did. Um, composables, definitely, I would do in vtest, um, unless they're very browsery. Composables, you know, generally they're headless. Write them in vtest. Um, cool. Oh, actually, backing it up one, one minute. Um, a really cool thing that Cypress does that I don't know if other things do yet is that Cypress has support for real events um, using a plugin. I think it's like second most popular plugin for Cypress. Um, called Cypress-Real-Events. Um, and it works over the Chrome DevTools protocol, which means that it gets to do a lot of more privileged things than Cypress does, because Cypress attempts to have browser support. The Chrome DevTools protocol, obviously, does not attempt to have wide browser support. It attempts to support Chromium-based browsers. But you can test things like Hover. right? You can test things like visually hovering over a row and making sure that that looks right. And that's hard. That's hard to do in any non-privileged environment. Um, when I say privileged in the context of a browser or an environment, do people generally know what I mean? Privileged. Yes, sandboxed. Cool. Um, basically, you'll see when I demo it, Cypress is going to yell at me and say, you're in an automated browser. Don't do anything secure. It's going gonna, it's gonna to yell at me. That's what it means to be privileged in, uh, in browser sandboxing terms. All right. So I want to go over the slide that An just said really quickly. I took this from the sidelines. It's kind of ballsy of me. Um, because a lot of what he's saying is actually correct, um, but it also applies to Cypress. Um, it, it's really interesting. So testing library. When we first released, when we first released Cypress um, component testing, 
in, and there's a timeline coming, it's the next slide. So you get like actual timeline um, guidance as I talk. Um, when we first released component testing, Kent C. Dodds retweeted us and was like, this is freaking cool. Freaking cool. Um, I'm very proud of myself. Um, I didn't mention where I'm from. I'm, I'm a hybrid of Florida, New York City, and Boston. So like the F word is like cultural for me. Um, I, so testing libraries philosophy, I'm just gonna read on slide again. Since testing libraries philosophy is to make tests resemble the way software is used by the user, the line between component unit testing and end-to-end -end testing can be very thin. And that is exactly true. And we are 100% on board and behind this idea that the more your tests resemble the way the user will use them, the more coverage you will get, the more, the more useful they'll be, right? Because if people, those, that, those of you who raised your hand when you said unit testing, um, I'm going to extend that to component testing. Um, because when people just mount a component and don't do anything, right? You just mount it. You have one line. You say, describe base button. It should render. And then expect, I don't know, what, VM to be truthy? That's a smoke test. It tells you that your SFC file compiled. Um, I'm holding my tongue because there's nuance there because it doesn't actually. But, um, and then you might, have, you might even say to match snapshot, right? Your, your HTML of the VM should match snapshot. And that gives you basically zero coverage. It gives you the coverage that it compiled and yeah, it outputted some H HTML. Cool. Um, that's not the way your users use your app, right? Your users don't know about, I mean, this time, many, many users know about HTML. Good for them. Um, but your users aren't using your app via HTML, right? Via string output. They're looking with their eyeballs and clicking things. That's the kind of test you want to see, literally see. So um, if we had played the walk-up video, you would have already seen the beautifulness that is Cypress 10 and the new UI. But things are out of order, and we'll deal. So Cypress 10 timeline, how old is this freaking project? So <laughs> Cypress 10 timeline, we started building this in 2018 under a, uh, under a Cypress's employee's like GitHub you know, username, right? I think Dmitry Kovalenko was the first person to do Cypress component testing. He's also the author of Cypress Real Events. Um, and then Gleb Bamotov, who, if anybody knows Cyprus, probably knows, has learned it from Gleb's prolific video playlists. Um, is it? What had happened? Okay. Um, it's been around for a minute, right? People have been using this for a while. Material UI from React actually used this for a while when Dimitri was on their team. Um, and the mounting libraries weren't core maintained and the, per the performance was really slow because we hadn't made an effort in Cypress core to integrate component testing, right? It was always like a plugin. Um, that's not cool because we can do better. So we begin hiring, right? We begin hiring and building the alpha. This is 2020, so March 2020, the day that the pandemic kind of like started. Um, I remember because like an American basketball player decided to lick his hand and then touch a bunch of microphones. If anybody else remembers that, that was the day I started at Cyprus. Um, and we, I was terrified because I used to work for a travel ads company that went under. I was the last person to voluntarily leave that company before 140 people got laid off because I worked at a travel ads company. Um, different story, find me afterwards. It's a pretty interesting story. Um, we served all of Expedia, Priceline, and every travel uh, company. We were really big in the EU as well. If you're a travel, travel piraten, um, I speak a little bit of German. Um, anyway, so the team is hired. We complete Cypress Component Testing Alpha in, let's say, like March, uh, March 2021 is when we complete the project. 
Um, I hire a team, it went great. We moved the repos over to at Cypress slash views, so they're no longer attached to an in individual employee. And we re-architect the biggest problem, the biggest like tangible technical problem between 2018 to 2020 is performance is slow, right? You make a change, a CSS change, and it takes two minutes to recompile your spec. So I get hired, you know, after the microphone licking incident, I get hired, I'm told, you need to write the docs. And I look at the tool and I'm like, it takes two minutes to compile, you can't, we can't ship. Um, like, you can't ship that, that doesn't work in the component development space. End to end, everything's slow. Component development, can't do that. And so we re-architect, right, I re-architect it. And so we use the dev server instead of the build and serve static files approach. You know, again, referring back to the lightning cat slide that, uh, that Guillaume has, we want to use the dev server and all of the goodies you get with it. Awesome. So at this point, since we're using your dev server config, your performance is as fast as your dev server and uses the same compilation config. Big underscore there. Uses the same compilation config. Production is closer to development. Very important. All right, cool. So if that brings us to February 2021, what have we been doing for the last year? Well, we redesigned Cypress. Um, UI is now Vue 3, TypeScript, script setup, all the goodies, make heavy usage of Vue use, and contribute back, which is pretty, like, pretty sweet, honestly. Um, and the Cypress team grew a lot, right? Previous slide, we raised $40 million in November of 2021, and then we spent it, we hired people. Um, the Cypress team, the Cypress component testing team is eight people on the component testing team alone. Um, and then right after we released the alpha, I went around kind of to the, to the component libraries we had and, um, you know, that Vue has. And I was like, hey, Vuetify, you know, it'd be really cool is instead of saying mount this component and make it match snapshot, if you actually clicked on it and interacted with it and made sure the Vuetify components worked all right. So I got them set up and then I, you know, went off to work on Cypress 10 and build a team, whatever. And I came back about a year later and I found out they'd been using it heavily. And that was really cool. And I'm about to show you what that is like. Um, so first things first, we released like two days ago, two patch releases, really happy that there aren't like serious, serious bugs. We, we did a lot of work to test it. Cypress is a huge project. We have what, did I make this number up? What is it? 3,200,000 NPM downloads a week? Yeah. We wanted to make sure the release was stable, so we did three rounds of manual QA on top of an insane amount of, of automated testing. Our build takes 60 minutes, parallelized over like a ton of machines. Um, cool. So what's next is Felt and Angular. Um, Proof of concepts are written on both. I'm speaking September 8th and 9th at Svelte Summit in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, you, can you can technically use both of them today, but we don't officially support them. Cypress has a very high bar for deciding we officially support stuff. So you may see something like beta and alpha labels, but the reason we're talking about this timeline is because the Mount API has been stable since 2018. The actual changes to your code that you will need to do once adopting this, it's pretty small. Um, cool. So, demo. Choose your own adventure. Um, we could do one of three things. And I'm going to need the lights on so I can actually see audience participation here. I'm not going to ask you to stand up because that's work. Um, but I will ask you to raise your hands and you don't have three hands, so I can't, I can't do that. Um, I will ask you to vote. So can I get the lights up pretty please? Awesome. So if you would like me to run through create view, which is npm create view and install Cypress from scratch, raise your hand, and I can show you the basics of how to test a component. Nobody wants that. Great. <laughs> Nobody wants that. I feel so bad. Soda T worked like just now. He published, he did, a, he did like a last minute NPM publish for CreateView. So I would use it in this presentation. So props to Soda T. He's, 
He's God mode awesome. Um, cool, so number two, refactor existing Viewify alpha tests. All right, we got some people, whoa, some people. All right, you want to, you want to build a component library. More people, wow. Damn, all right. Luckily, I'm most prepared for number three, but you're also gonna get number two whether you want it or not. Um, because it's, it's so pretty, man. You should see what the Beautify team did. Like, I came back into that repo, and like, I don't know if people follow me on Twitter, I posted on it, I was like, wow. All right, so let's do it. So your developer, your component test has two audiences. You have developers and users. We'll switch into demo in a hot second, but component libraries, your audience is split, right? Your audience is your teammate that sits next to you who's like, yo, how do I use this scoped slot? And the user that's like, I want this data table to look right. Like, you have two audiences. How do you figure out what to test, what detail to test? Um, we're gonna keep it really simple, and Ramona talked about this yesterday, keeping it simple. Uh, just look at the thing. Look at the thing, and you're like, I don't know, when I play with it, does it work? Like, we all have user brains. Um, and then put your developer hat on, and you're like, if I had to communicate this to somebody, what kind of thing is passed through this scoped slot? What kind of props does it accept? Does it supposed to render the title? Pretty simple questions, actually. Um, and oftentimes, we get in our own heads about like thinking about what's under the covers. And I can test the Beautify, I can write tests for Beautify without ever understanding the source code with Cypress. I want you to think about that for a second. I have no knowledge of the Beautify source code. Like, they do some crazy stuff. It's very meta because they want to be able to, to scale and modify, right? I can write component tests for them. I can modify them, I can refactor them as if I wasn't even part of the team. Really, really cool. All right, cool, demo time. Oh. Demo time. Why does four finger swipe not work right now? And why does command tab not work? Man. Oh, we're we're having a day. Ooh, there's a desktop display. Let's see if I can do this. I don't think I'm, I think I'm in a mirror. So we're gonna go to displays. And the primary display is over there. Oh. Display settings, default, use as. What do I want? Because I can barely see the freaking thing. The third one, I want this mirror HDMI to SDI. Thank you, because I couldn't see shit. Um, stuff. Um, <laughs> all right, so VS Code, I'm so over time. Sorry, production team. Um, I blame the video not going up. Not my fault. Um, all right, so we're gonna code. You wanted a component library. So let's take you to Cypress 10 for the first time. So if you've ever used Cypress, you'll notice it's extremely different. It looks different, it is a, has its own design system. Um, you can switch quickly between different kinds of projects. Here's my little proof of concept for Salt and, Spot and Cypress. Here's the Beautify internal code base for Beautify 3. Um, and here is my component library that I use when I teach the workshop I was supposed to teach. Um, we support Chromium browsers and Firefox. Uh, we don't support Safari. I have opinions. You can find me after that on why I don't think it's necessary. Um, and <laughs> test it manually. I don't know. You're never gonna get it right unless you test it manually. It still won't work if you automate it. Like, just, just open your phone. Um, find a friend with an iPhone. Um, if you don't have one. All right, cool. So when you open Cypress 10 for the first time in an empty project, we would ask you to create a new spec. We would tell you, please uh, enter your file name. This isn't actually, this is a feature we cut. What it's supposed to look like is this. Um, we cut that to ship. Um, create from component, create from story. You could imagine create from histoire. Uh, there is a common standard called the component story format that I'm gonna ask Guillaume if he'll compile down to for histoire so I don't have to do more work. Um, and that's the first thing we'll ask you to do is, is make a new component. 
Let's do it. Component, component name sci.js, create spec. And okay, run the spec. Hell yeah. And we have component name right here. It'll load absolutely nothing except for a smoke test. You can review the docs if you're confused, if you think that maybe it should render something. Um, and I don't remember where this is, so I'm just gonna open it in my IDE. It'll pull it forward. And it is this nice, tiny little window. I have a base modal that I built before giving this talk. Um, and I have the test for the base modal. We're just gonna name it base modal. And I think that a base modal should render a title. And I have a global command called Cypress. Is, is the test literally right here? Yeah, it is. Um, I think that the component test should render a title. And so I'll call Cymount with the base modal of props title. I'll get the modal selector. You'll notice that this is a token. This is the arrange part of Ramona's talk of arrange, act, and assert. And, uh, and then I'll say assert that it should contain the title. When I test drive, I use only. There's a plugin that like makes this like one keystroke. Um, and then I broke it. And I'm not sure why I broke it. Oh, because I changed the name of the, hmm? I have to copy the code in the example. Brilliant. Freaking brilliant, man. Boom. Did we work? No, because it can't resolve base modal. And this is what I mean, by the way, about your dev tools all being there. So what I want to do is I actually want to go up a few levels. Up and up. And where else am I going? What source components? Yep. Base modal dot view. Boom. And this is the modal that we render. We say hello from View Amsterdam. We have our dev tools here. So like any good developer, you can start to debug your component. And usually my workflow is that I write no, I write no tests uh, to start. My goal is to mount. I don't even write get. If I'm developing a modal for the first time, my component looks a little bit like this. Um, I actually use JSX and TSX in my tests. Um, talk about that some other time. Um, and you can play around with it. Like I have a click binding here on the top right. Can people see this even? I have a click binding here on the top right that says vshow. And show is false when I click off of the, um, off of the white background. I find that to be really helpful. You can hit R to rerun it and reset the state. Um, Let's see, anything else that is interesting? Yeah, when I develop, when I work with my designer, I'm working in Chrome like I work in Chrome. I find the node that I'm interested in, and maybe I'll say instead of background white on classes, this is windy CSS by the way, this is not tailwind CSS, I'll say like BG red is 500 and apply it, stuff like that. Background red. And that's how I develop with Cypress. And then at the end, it's basically an accident that I can, you know, add a selector that seems sane to my source code, get it, make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. And then it's also kind of an accident that I can get the same selector, click it, and make sure it's not visible. Um, the high point. The high point of Cypress, and I'm not gonna do it because I'm seven minutes over. There's a giant red clock. The high point of Cypress is that no matter how you fuck this up, right, if you use opacity zero, if you use Z index negative one, Cypress's visibility checks and existence checks are impossible to replicate in a node-based environment. And that is the number one reason that I use component, that when I build components, I build them in Cypress, because when I refactor styles, when I refactor styles, I get security. And I've, I don't have a tool that does that, right? You could say visual regression testing, and it helps. It helps. And we use it internally, but also then trying to click and be like, is there a parent element on top of it? 
stuff like that, it's just not possible to do in other runners. Um, cool. So last but not least, we're going to hop over to Beautify. I'm going to show you what they did on their, on their team um, because I ran out of time. And projects. This is called global mode. We don't really publicize it for reasons that I won't talk about. Um, but it's in the CLI. You can see it. And let's go to Beautify, component testing, choose a browser. I still like Chrome. Um, this is that privileged bit that I was saying. So Chrome is being controlled by automated software. Thank you for warning me. Um, and this is what the Beautify team has been doing, right? We have your Git status here. Two hours ago, apparently, I touched this file. Let's go to the V color picker. V color picker. And I really only use tab to navigate because I don't like mice. Um, all of all of the tests that they've written. I'm very, I'm just kind of in awe of it. Let's hopefully I didn't break it. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Each one of these, each one of these is expecting events to be emitted. Each one of these has a spy. So you're not even checking using that what Anne was talking about, those internals between Vue 2 and Vue 3, the differences we had to make in Vue test utils, all of that is hidden. You're just using spies, props, and you're passing in. This is probably way too small for anybody to read, any reasonable human. Um, just pass a spy. It says that. This has been aliased. And at the end of it, I keep clicking. I keep getting events. It's like your dev tools, like Vue dev tools. Seems reasonable. So I'm absolutely in awe of how you're able, look at this shit, how you're able to test a canvas, a canvas-based component without even knowing the implementation detail. That blows my freaking mind. So they could change the implementation tomorrow. Um, you wouldn't have to touch your tests. And you're testing like your user would. So. I think I'm going to end on that note. Let's switch back to the slides. I didn't have that much more. Yeah. I'll post. I always say I'll post these. I never do. Um, <laughs> get started. NPM create view. Thank you, Soda T. Thank you, Soda T. I don't know where the camera is, but. And uh, yeah, it's a little unicorn that I got for a speaker gift. Cheers.